If you look at some of the, uh, the models of the climate change impacts, for example, in Africa, it's devastating, and it's devastating on agriculture. So agriculture's uh, already poverty is unacceptable levels, and uh, if you can then imagine the impact of climate change on agriculture, it's going to change temperature, it's going to change rainfall, it's going to change extremes, and that means it's going to change the face of agriculture. Agriculture is really crucial for poverty alleviation and therefore food security. But on the other hand, uh, climate, agriculture is also emitting greenhouse gases. And uh, if you add up the emissions from agriculture itself and the, the deforestation that agriculture causes, it's almost 25%. We need to put mitigation and adaptation together and agriculture is where it's happened. It's one of the few sectors where adaptation and mitigation come together. I'll give you an example of uh, potato producers in the Andes. There's the case of people producing seed potatoes high in the mountains but uh, with climate change, higher temperatures, pests and diseases are moving up the slope essentially and so farmers are now having to either adapt and one of the ways of their adapting is to move up the mountain. So they're going higher up and they're going into carbon-rich grasslands. So here's a case where there's adaptation happening, adaptation driven by the realities of climate change, and it's also causing more mitigation, so it's a positive feedback. So the, the research work, there's a whole bunch of things that can be done there. Either you're looking at new varieties of potato, which adapt to the uh, which uh, can get, a, get away from the pests and diseases. You're looking for downscaled models to know what's going to happen in the Andes in terms of climate change. So there's a whole raft of research issues to tackle. In terms of technologies, there's some that are on the shelf and there's some that still have to be developed. And we'll be dealing with both kinds. For example, in East Africa, there's I would say there's probably seven or eight centers working there and now this new program actually means that there's going to be a really concerted effort to work together on strategic topics and not to be pulling in all different directions. This program is a wonderful opportunity to get those centers working together. Right from day one we're getting inputs from the stakeholders about what kind of research they want and that we build our research together with those stakeholders right from the start so that they, they're not passive receivers of information ten years down the line. They're right from the start working with us. We're not measured by scientific outputs, by wonderful papers in journals. We're really measured by outcomes. So we would like to see climate information totally integrated in the agricultural sector, in the rural development sector. We'd like to see carbon markets working for smallholder farmers in 10 years' time. We'd like to see climate information from satellite straight to cell phone farmers cell phones right down the field so that they can get seasonal forecasts and know what to do in terms of putting inputs on. So those are the kinds of things we wanted over the years.